Okay, we're going to do a little video here on measuring up a Mugen MBX 6T Eco. You can see we got electric motor in here versus nitro. Um, nice little change to uh, uh, reliability and usability, but not much noise. So, uh, not going to go through everything on this because there's already a video on the uh, B44 uh, modeling or measuring up that. Uh, what I'm primarily going to concern myself with here is how to determine pivot ball locations. So I'm going to start tearing things apart here and I'll uh, show you how to measure that up. Okay, as you can see I've got the MBX6T fairly well dismantled here, at least the front suspension. Uh, and what I want to try and show you here is how to measure or accurately measure the length of the uh, suspension arm um, using a pivot ball. So the biggest unknown we have here is the pivot ball itself. And there's two ways we can do this. There's a quick and dirty way which is not very accurate. Well, could not be. Could be not very accurate depending on how good your eyeballs are. And then there's the measurement technique which takes a little bit of uh, uh, calculation to figure out. So we're going to go through the long way first. I'm just going to zero my calipers here. So first thing I'm doing is measuring from the back of the shoulder to the top of the flat. So and that is, looks like I call it 21 millimeters. Okay, and then we measure the diameter of the ball. The diameter of the ball is 13.85, and then we measure the inside diameter of our recess, our counter bore here for the uh, for the socket drive, and that is six. So here's a little diagram I've made up. So I just measured the overall length, which is from the, the face of the counterbore to the bottom of the shoulder, which we measured as 21. The radius, which is the diameter, which we measured as 13.85 divided by 2. And then the inside diameter of the counterbore, which was 6. So those are the three dimensions that we can measure off that pivot ball. Then. The next thing we need to do is figure out where this center point is. So the easiest way to do that is we need to calculate a couple numbers here based on the uh, spherical ball. So we need to calculate this D dimension and, and this H dimension. So this handy little equation here, once you know what the the uh, counter bore is and the radius is, you can calculate the D dimension which I've done here, which worked out to 6.24 millimeters, which makes sense because the radius is 6.925, so it's got to be less than the radius. Uh, then the height h is simply the radius minus the, uh, the d value that we just calculated, so that gives us our h value of 0.685 millimeters. And then the length of the pivot ball, we just have to do a little bit of summation here, so it's going to be the l value that we measured here, which was 21 millimeters plus our height that we just measured here, the H value that we just measured here, which was 0.685, and then from that we subtract the radius, which was 6.925. So there, that gives us 14.76 millimeters, which is about as accurate as we can do it with the tools I have available to me. Now the other way would be to just eyeball it. So that's going to involve, probably the best thing to do here is going to be to try and Make a sharpie and mark. Move that a bit so you can see it. Mark on there where you figure the center of that pivot point is. And then we're just going to take our calipers and we're going to approximate to there. And with that method, I get 15.39 which is about what I expect. I think you could probably only anticipate being plus or minus half a millimeter on uh, a measurement using that method. So there's the two methods of doing it. 
uh, once you've got the uh, dimension from the shoulder to the center of the pivot ball then your suspension arm length is just simply the uh, the length from the center of the pivot to the end of it plus whatever shims we have some shims here uh, plus our LP value that we just determined up there and that gives you your total arm okay that's it